Hey, I want to talk to you about, um, <clears throat> real quick. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I got to make this quick. I'm going to go get something to eat for the family. Um, sin shall not lord it over you because you're no longer under the law, but under grace. Um, somebody asked in a chat, what do we do about our sins? You know, um, and they were talking about the worldly approach, which is kind of psychology and Eastern mysticism says, you know, well, the root problem is your desire and it's your ego and it's your, you know, and, and basically it's, you got to figure out what's wrong with you and why you do it. You know, what, what is the root of your desire that you're trying to fulfill? And that I said, goes back to Adam. That's endless, you know, trying to figure out why, why doesn't help me. Why does not give me any power over sin? <clears throat> the only, and we're not given any power over sin. We do not have power over sin. Okay? The only thing we can do as Christians about sin is to come forward to the throne of grace and believe in Jesus Christ and believe what he's accomplished. We believe in the forgiveness of our sins. We believe the blood he shed. And we also grow in believing that we were crucified with him and that God is not reckoning our sins against us and our history against us, more and more we start to realize God is dealing with me because of Christ. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. That's something we grow in. All that is growth. But we also develop a history with God in our life where he proves to us that sin is not our Lord. And the way he does it is he keeps saving us faithfully from consequences of sin that we should have endured, that we feared. The, thing, the way sin lords it over you, because the wages of sin is death, is through the spirit of bondage and fear. Remember, Jesus died on the cross. It says he tasted death for every man, that he may destroy him who had power over death, that is the devil, that he may release those who are all their lives subject to bondage due to fear of death. And death is related to condemnation. We, we were in fear. And the reason death is here because of sin, right? And the wages of sin is death. And basically, we live in fear that our sins are going to catch up to us. And when we become a believer, Jesus Christ becomes our Lord, not sin. Sin is no longer our master. But we don't believe that. We start out believing, well, Jesus forgave me of my sins, but I better stop sinning or sin is going to ruin my life. And we think sin is the thing that has the power and it's going to pull us away from God and sin is going to master us and sin is going to take away our salvation and sin is going to pluck us out of the Lord's hand because sin is the Lord. That's what we think. But the Bible says sin shall no longer lord it over you because you're no longer under law, but under grace. And what does it mean to be under grace? It means that Christ is now the Lord. He's the head. <clears throat> so in grace, what he teaches us through our experience in our Christian life is that no, in fact, Christ kept intervening when sin should have won the day. It didn't swallow me up the way I thought it would. And eventually a Christian has a testimony of, I'm young, uh, I've been young, now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And I've never seen his seed begging for bread. He learns that God keeps delivering me even though I don't deserve it. I should have X, Y, Z, and yet it didn't, the ax never fell. You know? Christians live... Uh, while they're unrenewed and, and don't know any better and under false teaching, in fear of their sins, waiting for the other shoe to drop. I lived like that forever. Uh, just around the corner, my sins are going to catch up with me because I thought sin was the Lord and could defeat Jesus Christ. <laughs> but God will prove himself faithful. And I uh, mentioned in this conversation, my grandpa used to get so mad, mad at me because he said, he said, you always fall into the outhouse, but come out smelling like roses. 
And he would always say that when something wonderful happened to me, uh, when I should have had something terrible happen to me. <laughs> because every choice, every life choice I made, in my parents' view, in my family's view, was a mistake. I married the wrong person. I did all the wrong thing with my finances. I quit the wrong jobs at the wrong time. I walked out on jobs where I had no money I, and I had nothing but credit card debt and no way to pay my bills, but I wasn't going to do it anymore. You know, a mortgage and car payments and credit card debt, no way to pay the bills. And I wasn't going to do that thing, job anymore. And I quit, you know, that I was just, a, I was a very irresponsible person. This is as a Christian, you know, I, I, I was a, a Christian with very little character. Now, a lot of it was because of all the anxiety attacks and all the different condemnation experiences and the fact that I was in a cult. There was a lot of stuff going on that weighed me down so that I couldn't even take normal life. <clears throat> but to the world, in the world's point of view, I was a wreck. And in my family's point of view, I was a wreck. And I thought for sure my sins were going to catch up with me, you know? He who doesn't take care of his family, is a, is, his own household is worse than an infidel and has denied the faith, you know. I remember that verse rang out to me whenever I would lose a job and, and couldn't find one and couldn't find the motivation to look for one and couldn't get to, you know, and I was just lazy. I, actually, I was depressed, you know. Uh, then those verses would come and basically it was Satan telling me sin is your Lord and here comes its wage you're going to owe it death and fear would grip me right but God always came through he always delivered me I mean ridiculously miraculously mercifully and gracefully because I'm a son and an heir not because I deserve it not because I'm righteousness, righteous not because I did well but because I believe on him who justifies the ungodly, even though I work not, he kept coming in and intervening. Now, that's not to say there's not consequences for my sins that I didn't, you know, my life didn't have to be so messy. And yet there were mercies. And part of it is I was able to appreciate the Lord's mercy because I knew how bad I was. You know, some people experience the Lord's mercy and they never appreciate it because they don't realize how bad they are. <laughs> um, they think they're doing everything, you know. But I knew, and I recognized, and over time, what happened is I started to lose my fear that sin was going to win the day, and that the consequences of sin were going to get me. And I started to see that Jesus really was the Lord of my life. It's not that I made him Lord, it's that he had situated himself as Lord. He had purchased me with his blood. He had redeemed me. I'm his purchased possession, his property. He's head over all things to the church. And uh, he's faithful. You know, he's a good steward of his possessions. He's faithful over his house, which house you are. Uh, and he takes good care of me because he's faithful. You know, he's not going to lose me and not take care of me and just let me go to wreck. He's not like me. You know, if you looked at my closet... You go, man, that guy's a slob. Do you think Jesus, you think you'd go look at his possessions and go, man, that guy's a slob. No, I guarantee his closet doesn't look like mine. And I'm his trophy. I'm in his inheritance. Of course he's going to take care of me. I didn't know all that, you know. I thought that the devil and the consequences of my sin was maybe going to win the day. And I've lived in fear. Well, the fear actually exacerbates the sin. So as long as you're in that fear, you're going to sin because you're going to have anxiety attacks and you're going to freak out and you're going to yell at people around you and you're going to be irritable and you're going to, you know, make bad decisions because you're going to be so unhappy. Um, but eventually, God just kept showing me his faithfulness and his grace and his mercy and his undeserved love over the years. And I have now a story that, that in my mind... Uh, you know, God's faithful. Sin didn't lord it over me. It can't lord it over me. Sin didn't win. The consequences of sin are not ruling the day. Christ is ruling the day. He is my Lord. He did take care of me. He did intervene. 
And I'm not worried about, oh my God, all my sins are going to catch up with me and I'm going to be devastated. I don't have those fears anymore. I know my future is brighter than my past. The light of the righteous grows brighter and brighter till the perfect day. I'm not fearing tomorrow. My life is today, maybe not as good as it'll be tomorrow. Maybe there's things that my mom could come over and look at my life and go, wow. You know, I always think about my mom because she's so judgmental. In her mind, I'm an unemployed musician in January through March. She just looks at me as unemployed. She has no idea, like, I won, you know, the Not Wedding Award year after year after year. And I'm the most, you know, I have a, what you would call a successful wedding business or anything like that. She doesn't look at it like that. You're unemployed. You're a musician. You know? <laughs> in her mind, I'm just a loser. Uh, but... Uh, sorry, you know, my mother in my mind is, is like a plague, but the point is, is that God's taking such good care of me and I'm not worried about it anymore. I used to fear all the time. I remember when I had my $60,000, $70,000 job, uh, as a project lead, all I did was fear losing that job and then not being able to pay my house payment and all that stuff. I eventually just walked out and I had no idea how I was going to survive. My marriage fell apart, everything. I lost the house. I just couldn't take it anymore trying to uphold this existence, you know, and 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 then God put it all back together. That's when my grandpa was like, "You just keep coming out smelling like roses. Your life should have been completely wiped out." It's not fair. And it's not fair. It's grace and mercy. But sin shall not lord it over you. And the and we fear the consequences of sin more than we fear Christ. And we believe in the power of sin more than we believe in Christ's power. And we don't realize how much he has dedicated himself to see us through. And the verse he gave me in Isaiah for all those years was, I will not, the bruised reed he will not break, and the smoking flax he will not quench. Right? And until the righteousness goes forth like the light of the day. And, uh, you know, he will not stop with you. And he's, that means he deals with us so gently. We're bruised reed. He can't just bend you back into place. And you're a smoking flax. He can't just blow on you to get the fire going again. He can't just say, come on, you know. No, he's got to slowly work you back into place in the most gentle of ways. Over the course of years, maybe. Because we're brittle, we'll break. Or we're smoking, we'll be quenched. And he knows how to deal us with us by his power in the most gentle and fine-tuned ways to show us his faithfulness and teach us to rest, knowing we have a track record, a history of a guy of a God who never let us down. And so that, coupled with all of his promises, te he teaches us, look, I'm faithful. I'll overcome everything. You can't overcome your sin. There's nothing you can do about your sin except come to me. And as you're coming to me, you're learning that I forgive you. You're learning that I don't withhold the fellowship from you. And that gives you hope. And you learn again and again and again that I can wash your conscience and restore you to the fellowship. You know, even if you are confessing your sin, eventually you get to the part where you say, I have the blood of Jesus and believe the gospel. Fine. You know, and then in that fellowship, uh, again and again and again, I'm also working in your life to show you, look, it wasn't as bad as you thought. Yeah, there were some consequences, but did you really get swallowed up? How do you know you didn't? Well, you're still alive today. You have food on the table. Jesus said, I got to a point where I just live like what Jesus said. Don't worry like the Gentiles do about tomorrow. Having food and clothing, let us be content. You know, if I got food and clothing and a roof over my head and I'm still alive, good enough. That's where I was talking about the lilies, you know. God clothes the lilies. They don't do anything. Consider the uh, sparrows. They don't sow or reap or toil or have, gather into barns, and yet God takes care of them. How much more do you, you of little faith? That was when I was at my lowest place. I had no house. My marriage was falling apart. I had no job. I was. I had a mountain of debt. I had. I thought my life was over, and I was like, I'm a parasite. I've ruined the life of my life, my wife's life, the life of everyone around me. Everyone thinks I'm useless. What does God think? And that's when he pointed me to the lilies and the sparrows and said, look, I value life just because of life. You're not dead to me. Just because you think your usefulness has ceased, you know. 
And, and then through that, he started to show me his faithfulness in fellowship first. And then he showed me that I don't let you down. And uh, I learned by experiment that the sin didn't swallow me up. Christ lifted me up. So I just wanted to encourage you that, that he is faithful. You don't have to fear your sins. We all have sins. Sin is stronger than any of us. And it will take us way further than we want to go if we're not. We should fear to a certain extent sin in the sense that we should be aware that it's more powerful than us. But it's not our Lord. No, we can't deal with it. But Christ can. All he needs is for us to be in a position of weakness, not confidence. And a position of need, not sufficiency, self-sufficiency. And a realization that I can't do anything and I have to come to him. That's what it means to be crucified with Christ. And he has to be my life. And Lord, only you can deal with my sins. And he'll, he'll, as he delivers you from the fear of sin, he delivers you from its power. The power of sin is in the fear. Because when you are afraid of sin, it reigns over you through condemnation. And the way it reigns is by keeping you from fellowship with God because you think he's mad at you so you don't come forward boldly so you don't access the power the fellowship is the power when you're in the fellowship it says what if you walk according to the spirit you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh if you've got a buoyant heart full of thanksgiving towards God and you're just in the fellowship and you've got joy you're not going to be going after the lust of the flesh but that's every day every day we need to be filled otherwise I could drift into anything I'm aware of that you know but at the same time, I'm not afraid that in five weeks you're going to find me down at the crack house anymore. You know, I, I'm not, I know that he's faithful. He's going to save me and save me and save me. I've put my trust in him, and I know that he's able to keep that which I've committed to him. Uh, hopefully this is an encouragement. I could say more, but I really had to get the food. Talk to you later.